What's up, everybody? Welcome to another edition of your favorite show, Browner and Lawhead. I'm John Browner, as always, joined by Jason Lawhead on the Mightier 1090 ESP. And we are here for a fun time, not a long time. We do Monday through Wednesday, 6 to 7 p.m., where we have all the fun and none of the hangover. What's up, Jason? We love you fun time, not a, not long time here. <laughs> What's up, man? Uh, yeah, Friday's upon us for us and uh, end of the week. And uh, yeah, man, lots to talk about. We always do. We'll chew on whatever. Did you watch the All-Star game are, last night? Before but before we get to that, okay. if you are a fan of live music, Jason, I need you to comment yes or no. Yeah, I love, you know, I love live music. If I, you I, are yeah. a fan. Are you a fan of dive bars? I love. I'm from Lorain, Ohio. We we if there should if there was a dive bar, a walking dive like bar, Capitol Hall of Fame. If there was a dive bar Hall of Fame, we would be up for it. Are you into cover bands? I don't mind a cover band. I th- I use it. Me and my wife have this funny joke about cover bands. I mean, I know you're going to a promo here, but uh, me and my wife got this funny <laughs> joke about a. Uh, cover band music festival i'll tell you after you you promo it then all of you if you are a yes to all three of those bang 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 then i cordially invite you to uh I, okay keg the dad band i yeah. i don't know the name of the band but bill <laughs> hagan the owner of 1090 is doing a show him and his band at the kraken tonight starting at 8 p.m it's three sets. It'll be a great time. All the great friends who, who are around the area are more than welcome to come. If you're in Chula Vista, you want to drive up. If you're in Oceanside, you want to drive down. If you're in East County, stay in East County. But come I'm on I'm going to swing through. I'm going to swing through. Oh, yeah? Yeah, yeah. It ain't far from home. And uh, the Kraken's a, a fun little spot right on the coast highway, not far from from home so i'm gonna probably i'm not gonna get there right at eight i'll get there casually late but i'll probably get in there around nine or so 9 30 for a little bit pop in listen to some jams uh, have a little beer or two yeah it's what a great spot so if you're in that area i definitely would go i have made it clear to all those who know i will be stopping across the street at pacific coast grill for espresso martini Ooh. and then taking in the activities you're an aristocrat huh oh okay yeah, getting that well, espresso yeah, martini yeah, yeah. pre-gaming across the street at the at the tablecloth yeah. restaurant then come on over before i dive bar yeah, yeah a little yeah. biker bar yeah. almost kind of yeah right but uh it'll be so, fun yeah man, man. It, Bill Hagan's been awesome as far it's been oh. awesome with the station and he's been very helpful and he's he sent us all these nice lovely uh packages containing shirts that if you are one of the first 50 people tonight you will get a free shirt which is a great way to pack the crowd with 50 people when the show starts so I'll be there I'll be wearing this shirt from this package I lost a bet so I'll be there till it's over Ooh, and it'll be a good yeah, yeah okay yeah. it'll be a good time man it'll be a good time i'm looking forward to it i'm not really big on cover bands more importantly the particular type of cover band because i don't know what they do per se but we'll see man we'll have a good time it'll be fun man and as you said earlier bill has been such a generous guy with his time and his efforts first off i mean everything he's put yeah, his man. stuff into and what he continues to do and the work you get put in, getting you know, ESPN, getting Jim Rowe, and all that kind of stuff. But then just the guy he is to like us, you know, we barely know him. We met him a few times and he's right. really supportive. But hey, here's some Padre tickets. He invites you out on you know fishing excursions or other things and movie for me. So he's always thoughtful that way about people that really he doesn't know, but he because he supports us. Uh, he really shows it in just these ways. So I'm going to be out there to watch him jam. That's for sure. I will 100% support this man and his effort, even if, I, even if I can't remember the name of the band. Listen, the reason why people always give me a break on forgetting names, because they know I forget names, but I show up, I support, I won't forget your face. That's all that needs to be known. So in the end, if you're good, I will definitely give, I will definitely pump you up if you're good. So shout out. I'll see everybody out there if you're coming. Uh, if you're not coming, you know, like it on Twitter or something. Uh, speaking of liking things, 
Like, share, subscribe to the show. If you miss anything, head over to the iTunes podcast or head over to the YouTube under Kaplan and Crew. That's where Brown and Lawhead is and are and will be number one podcast in the Great Friends Podcast Network. Listen, I got a thing. I want to talk about it uh, on the show today. I love John Madden, the game John Madden. John Madden, obviously, rest in peace. He's on the cover of the game this year, Madden 23. We're going to talk about that for a little bit. Uh, I The All-Star game is an interesting watch. We'll see how people took in it. We'll see how Jason took it in. We'll talk about how I took it in as well. But I want to start out with something. Um, it, it, poor baby, right? The smallest violin in the world type situation. I understand gas is expensive. I understand that there are people struggling, right? So the idea that someone has to get their own plane or purchase their own plane ticket isn't really top of the mind for people. But in a sports aspect, this would be the equivalent of being employee of the month. And they're going to send you to the yearly conference of the corporation you work for. They're going to send all 12 of you, each employee of the month, but of your branch that you work at, they didn't pay for you to go. You got to drive yourself. Because if you're a pitcher for the A's, or most importantly, Juan Soto, you had to get your own flight to Los Angeles for the All-Star game. Now, Juan Soto is a different story. They're going through some beef. He wouldn't sign a 15-year yeah. contract. So exactly. they're like, hey, you on your own. But what happened with the A's? really bothered me more than any because I love pettiness. I could sit around with the petty all day when it comes to sports and, and this type of uh, uh, pissing contest. But what happened with the A's should never happen. Right. If the A's did this because they didn't have the money, then we need to look at the A's ownership and it needs to end tomorrow. Major League Baseball needs to purchase the Oakland A's. If they can't pay for the plane ticket, of the player that they're sending to the all-star game. One of the things that happens in sports is that really, really bad teams get overlooked. And in what pretty much is a regional sport being baseball, bad teams absolutely don't exist. Listen, The A's are worse than that. And so when you're looking at the way that they're running their franchise in a building where poop comes in the dugout, true story, <laughs> where they – let their manager go because they knew they were going to not compete when they traded their best players away because they didn't want to pay them. This should be illegal. This is bad for the sport. This is bad for the community. And this is bad for the game. Of, this is bad for the reputation and the image of baseball. I don't understand how the A's can get away with this, but I understand why the Nats did it. Yeah, I mean, the Nats are like, hey, look, dude, I mean, you just said no to $440 million. I guess you got enough money to go fly yourself places. <laughs> Have fun. Good luck. I don't mind it from the Nationals. It's like, dude, what else do we got to do but offer you $444 million? So obviously you don't want to be here. We're going we're, we're gonna to spend our time and resources working on a trade for you. Have fun at the All-Star Game being one-tenth of a National, basically. I get that. <laughs> I, I get that. Right, like you're on your way out. One of his, it, what they ought to did is one of his leg is one of his legs on his uh, pants should have just been the team he's going to because he's basically one step further to that team anyway. Now the A's have just been cheap forever. We've all known that. I mean th th that torch has been passed, started by Char Charlie Finley in the '70s that broke up that great dynasty that he really didn't have to, um, you know, uh, if he didn't want to. And could have spent money on at least a lot of those pieces to keep them uh, throughout that '70s run, but no, he 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 was he elected to be cheap and and sell guys like it was like the 1920s. Um, so that started it. You know, I got a, it's a funny story. Bill Burr told me this a long time ago. Bill's sister, younger sister, he's got a younger sister, um, and one of her first jobs out of college was she worked for the Oakland A's front office department. You know, like one of those kind of she had come from a good, good college resume and all that stuff. But, you know, she was in the inner workings and she had to take like they made her pick up after like an honorary day. They made her in like her small little 
Toyota nothing that she just bought, you know, living in the Bay Area at high rent at 23 years old, made her go pick up Raleigh Fingers at a hotel and drive him to like Oakland <laughs> Airport in some small little like pop that little hatchback trunk, throw his throw and and it was just like one of those that's just a prime example this is probably only 10 12 13 years ago maybe tops uh, i'd say and that's that's that and and the fact that you're right the fact that and i and i'm always the last guy i'm old school and everything it's like man the i wish the you know the a's couldn't leave oakland and just build them a new state they, they meant they you know they sound the oakland a's so much success so many great players they should stay in oakland but yeah Dude, they've got feral cat colonies living in that stadium. They've got sewage going through the dugouts. They make, like you saw the movie Moneyball, right? I mean, they're making yeah. players spend a dollar in their Pepsi machine in the clubhouse. They're not even giving them free soda. It's And the sad part is, is right now, Vegas is ready. It's like there's a Steve Wynn or a Mark Cuban. There's a million of those guys ready to head up an investment group and say, give me that team in Vegas right now. Nobody's buying that crap in Oakland and having to do all no. the semantics it takes to move this team to Oakland. But it's like, hey, Manfred, get off your butt. Get that thing moved. Take control of the franchise. We'll get all of our ducks in a row. We'll get the stadium, everything, whatever we got to do, and we'll start playing ball in Vegas by 2023, 2024, whatever it is. I think that this is sign number one that by the start of next year, all wheels should be in motion to put that team in Las Vegas. It's got to be. Hasn't been any formal, I, there hasn't been any formal announcements. There's no really other place to put a baseball team other, other than um, uh, Las Vegas at this point. And I, I, I sincerely hope that because if I'm a professional athlete and – I make it to the big leagues. I shouldn't be dealing with minor league issues. This idea or this situation is, is so beneath Major League Baseball. Like, if I'm Major League Baseball and I get wind of this, million dollar fine. Million dollar fine. Now, not to the Nats, again, because that's just pettiness. They can say, listen, this guy, XYZ, didn't make it. They can, make, they can come up with a reason. The... A's pitcher had to take a ride with the Astros. Like, literally. They were like, wait, you going to an all-star game? How you getting there? Man, I, I don't know, man. I guess I got to get my own. Like, what? Oh, man, come on, man. Just get on, get on our bus. We'll like a it was like there. a humanitarian mission that the right. Astros and just <laughs> did. It's like they're like you know, the teams are gonna start flying over and dropping bag or bags of rice in Oakland County Coliseum. It's just it's just gonna be like you're gonna see like Yankee planes flying over, just dropping aid, you know. It's a bag of balls in the middle <laughs> bag of, of center field. Bag of balls, some rosin, just a bunch of stuff, just humanitarian aid being flown over <laughs> Oakland Stadium as we speak. Oh, look at that, and guys. Bro, I, uh, I see. Bases. I see what's happening. I see what <laughs> we're even looking for a third base. Sweet. Hey, wasn't that I... nice? The Yankees donated some water coolers to Oakland this <laughs> month. I mean, come on. What's going on? I, I chalk. I look at, hey, you guys need chalk to at... paint the field. We could go on. I, I could at... we could do this for a whole show. <laughs> <laughs> cat food for this... all the feral cat colonies that are living in the concourses and the bricks and everywhere. You know that, right? There's the feral cats. cat colonies living there. It I why would you go see a game there? Like, ask a real question. Like, why would you go see a game? The money ball thing is cute. I and and because this is where this started. Like, we're upset with what happened with, in Oakland now. But Moneyball is where this started. Moneyball allowed a cheap organization to continue to be cheap and to rake in profits. Like, the Oakland A's front office is vulture capitalism. They literally pay out the least and rake in the most. And people applauded the entire situation and followed suit in different places. Now, the Astros did it. Not the Astros, but... If I remember correctly, the Red Sox took it to the max because they did Moneyball and then they paid people on top of doing Moneyball. So 
what what's happened in Oakland is a travesty, and it it makes people look at the situation similar to what happened here in San Diego with the Chargers. Why would we pay anything for this organization? Why would we pay to build a stadium when the owner won't either A, put in to help, or B, put in on the product that's on the field, my dude? Come on. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, you know, but it, it goes right back to the origin of that franchise, how it's always worked, and that just happens, right? That just becomes this, you know, DNA, right? Like uh, right. Steinbrenner changed the attitude of the Yankees, right? So when, right. you know, the Yankees' old ways of just always being better than everybody because there was 10 teams in the league and you only had to win a pennant, eventually as the game grew and Mano went away, the Yankees – had a hard, hard time adjusting to, uh, you know, expansion, and then eventually the, 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 the you know, they, they, they didn't have the farm systems that that they once dominated because they were spread thin and other other teams, and then all of a sudden he he made that statement. He came in and bought them when they were at their lowest in the seventies and said, "I don't care." How much? I don't care if it costs me money out of my own checkbook. I I will lose my. I will get everybody, and we will win. We will win. And that attitude has permeated even to this huger flex with him gone. That they just are like, doesn't matter. Here's how much we're spending. And yes, they. Right. they but he built the you know the network to to build all that money around it. And um, and, and Oakland has always just said, you know, we're a flea market. Nah, we good. We're a flea market. We good. It's funny you brought up the Yankees because if you were to listen to Aaron Judge, you would assume that being a Yankee ain't for everybody. Yeah. Like it's funny, it's funny how you are speaking of the mystique and, and how the Yankees will spend whatever it takes to get the job done. And it almost seems like Aaron Judge is over all of it. Like one place, I think there's there's one, there's two places in professional sports where it's got to be very difficult to play. New York City for the Yankees and Los Angeles for the Lakers. Every other place has as good ups as they do downs. But I've got to imagine being on the Yankees, good or bad seasons, is the worst fishbowl you could possibly live in when it comes to major league sports and at any level. And I feel the exact same way about the Los Angeles Lakers. There's, if you play for the Lakers, dude, Mike Penberthy is still getting work because he played for a Laker championship team. <laughs> like, Devin George, I can do a lot of these names, by the way. Devin George Devin is working George, wow. because he played for the Lakers. Tyron Lue is now an NBA head coach and NBA champion head coach because he played for the Lakers. It's different. It hits different. But some people, sometimes, a famous person once said, I don't know who it was, everything ain't for everybody. Yeah, man, every time I see Judge lately now and they talk about this, it just seems like he's talking about um, kind of something he doesn't want to talk about, something he just really doesn't right. even want to be attached to. It's almost like, Eh, like oh my god like and we talk about that mystique there's one thing it's like guys that aren't even yankees talk like they want to be a yankee you know oftentimes when they're in maybe the last year of the contract or when the questions start coming up about you know where they're next where they're going to go next depending on where they are i mean it, it it's it's that synonymous with you know and 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 to your point yeah it's tough being a yankee in new york and being a laker in la very i, I agree but when you're on top and, and when you're playing well and when your team's playing well and a, a lot of it is because your statistics are up there, boy, there's no other place to be. There really right. isn't. I mean, there's no other place to be. And, yeah, the Clevelands and the Chicagos and the Minneapolis is, is you yeah, know. That's great, they, yeah. They, 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 they'll treat a guy more with kid gloves before they'll run him out of town because, hey, those markets really want a superstar to feel welcome there most parts. You know, Cleveland had a – issue years ago um the media with with uh, albert bell uh, and no matter that he was leading us to great teams and putting up psychotic numbers they they just 
his truculency, all of those things, drove a wedge, and they kind of helped not nudge him out of town, in my opinion. And we've always been tough on our football teams because, God, I mean, there's been a lot to be tough on. But it, that just goes oh, wait, back. More, wait, we we, we got to get, we, yeah, we gotta we get got, to a break. We got to get to a break. But before we get to this break, again, I got to tell y'all, tonight, if you are in your car, calmly pull over off the road and drive yourself to the Kraken to see the best, as they call themselves, dad bod band. It's a cover band. I don't know what kind of music they play, but I can guarantee you it's going to be a good time because the Kraken, if they don't got nothing, they got them bomb heavy-handed drinks, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So you're going you gonna to walk in, you're going to Uber out, and that's a good sign of a dive bar, regardless of where you at, regardless of where you're going. So John Browner, Jason Lawhead, we will be back on the Mightier 1090 ESPN talking about, did you watch the All-Star game last night? <laughs> 